Welcome to Naresh Technologies and this is Bangar Raju and in this video uh, we will discuss about uh, the constructors of the thread class. So, this is a part 3 of our uh, multi threading videos and in this we will just learn about the constructors that are available for the thread class. Fine. First uh, to demonstrate this let me write a simple method static void test for int i is equals to 1, i less than or equal to 100, i plus plus test plus i. Fine. So, the same method what we just uh, seen in our previous example. Now, I want to call this by using the thread. So, normally how do we call directly because it is static method I am straight away calling it console dot read line and execute the code. Yeah, a very simple logic printing from 1 to 100. So, the same code what we just been checked up in the previous example, but there were written multiple methods, but here it is a single method. And now, I am calling this method by using the main thread, but I want to call it by using a child thread. I want to create a new thread and call this method. So, as per our discussion in the previous, how to call a method by using a thread? First, you are required to create the instance of the thread class. Okay, to do this, let us first import the namespace using system dot threading and now let us create the instance of the thread class thread t1 is equals to new thread and if at all you just notice this the constructors of the thread class there are four constructors that are available for us under the thread class. So, what are the four constructors that are present for us in the thread class let us try to just check it out. The first one, a parameterized thread start start, second one, thread start start and two more are there, another two methods are there, that is not important, but these two methods, let us try the first two constructors, what are the first two, a parameterized thread start and a thread start. So, what is a thread start? The thread start is a delegate actually, it is a delegate. And what is a delegate? A delegate is a type safe function pointer using which we can call a method. They are somewhat very much similar to the function pointers what we have in the C++ language. So, a delegate is a type safe function pointer. And why we call it as a type safe function pointer is the signature of the delegate should exactly match with the signature of the method we are going to call. So, if you notice here this thread start delegate is what you require to pass, but in the first two examples we are directly passing off the method name. What is our method name? If it is a test or something we are directly passing off the method name, but exactly it does not take the method name. What it takes is a delegate called as thread start. Let me just demonstrate what is thread start first. Thread start is a delegate and you right click on this and you will find an option called go to definition just use it and now you will notice what is thread start here, thread start, it is a delegate and remember this is also defined in the system dot threading namespace and this is non value returning and does not take any parameter. And right now the test method what you are defining here, the test method what you are defining here is also exactly matching with the signature of the delegate C, delegate is void non value returning, even the test method is also void non value returning and delegate does not take any parameter and at the same time the test method is also not taking any parameter. So, this signature is exactly matching with the delegates signature here. So, that is what if these two are going to be matching with each other that is what generally using a delegate we call a method and a delegate is called as a type safe function pointer. The reason for it is the signature of the delegate should exactly match with the signature of the method we want to call by using the delegate. And right now that is what we are noticing and this signature is matching here void as well as non value returning and here also it is void as well as non value returning. So, what exactly should I do now? Create the instance of the thread stat. Actually to work with a delegate we have three steps. First thing is you are required to define a delegate and that is already defined. And the second step is instantiating a delegate. What is instantiating a delegate? Instantiating a delegate is a process of binding a method with the delegate. 
how do we do this thread start obj is equals to new thread start and when you notice this the constructor when you are trying to create an instance it will ask you the target method the target method should be void and should not take any parameter that is the meaning of this particular statement the target method should be void that is non value returning and should not take any parameter and right now our test method matches that criteria the test method is exactly matching to that particular criteria now so let us pass the test method here test so with this the method is bound with the delegate the method is right now bound with the delegate and now what thread is taking thread is taking thread start delegate so now can i pass obj here so i am just passing obj to this as a parameter and once you are passing the obj as a parameter automatically what happens now the delegate is bound with the thread now and now simply call t dot start executing the doubt which arises for us in this case is in the previous example we did not do all these things what did we do we straight away passed the method name here test and the logic got executed the logic got executed but right now what we are doing we are creating the instance of the thread start delegate and then passing it as a parameter what is the difference actually there is no difference between the two at all both are exactly same but what happens is when you pass the method directly here the delegate instance is implicitly created by the clr or the framework the clr or the framework will take the responsibility of creating the delegate and pass it as a parameter to the thread and right now we are explicitly doing it but if you don't do it and pass up the method here that is implicitly performed who will do that is the framework or the clr is going to perform the task for us on behalf of us okay so just to make this particular clear directly you pass a method name and tomorrow when you see the constructor you will get a doubt what is the doubt ray there is no nothing directly taking a method name as a parameter we find different constructors these two are overloaded but single parameter constructors these two are single parameter constructors and here we will get a doubt this is taking parameter as thread start and this is taking thread start and there is no constructor which takes a method name directly and we are able to pass a method name so this will be a big doubt for you so for that reason i am giving a clarification here what's it when you pass the method name here internally it will create the instance of the delegate called as a thread start and pass it as a parameter and that is done by the framework of the clr for us but today what i do i'm showing is without the clr implicitly performing the task i am explicitly performing how by explicitly creating a instance of the thread start delegate and passing the thread start delegate as this so these two statements are one and the same what two statements either you write like this or you write thread t is equals to new thread of test these two are very much similar even you write like this or even you write like this both are very much similar okay fine yeah we are able to see the output and now just notice this instantiation what is it instantiation instantiation of a delegate is a process of binding the method with the delegate instantiation is a process of binding the method with a delegate this can be done in different ways this is one way how you can perform another way thread start obj is equals to you can directly specify the method name is a is another way how you can instantiate a delegate directly passing the method name you can write like this also just check out we get the same output we get the same output here next we can also pass it like this thread start obj is equals to delegate of delegate of open the curly braces and here you can just write the method name and also bind it another way how you can perform same output 
So, this is the third option how we can do it and uh, what it is generally we use this mechanism for anonymous methods. If you are not aware of anonymous methods just find out what is the anonymous method. Anonymous method is a method without a name. So, actually here we are writing the method, method name here without writing the method name we can write the body straight away this code can be put in this location. This is what we call as a anonymous method introduced in C sharp uh, 2.0 and another way how you can perform binding thread start obj is equals to delegate of sorry no need any delegate directly open the brace no need to use the delegate keyword and we use a lambda operator is a lambda operator and we can bind the method name to this. So, like this also we can perform this is a more simplified version of anonymous methods what we call it as a lambda expression straight away without writing the test you can write your for loop there and once you write the for loop it executes ok. So, all are going to be one and the same this is the very traditional process and we can also perform it like this and this is the concept of anonymous methods and uh, we are using a named method but generally we do not use named methods what we use is the logic will be directly implemented here means the for loop is a directly going to be present in this location ok. But I did not do that I was using a named method this is a wrong process but still works and the fourth option is using the concept of the lambda expression or the lambda operator. So, this lambda operator also will allow you to bind it now and now once I do this automatically this obj passed here and the thread will start. So, either you explicitly perform it or you do not perform it then the CLR is going to perform it. So, option number 1 you can perform it, option number 2 you do not perform it on behalf of you CLR will perform the task for you. So, this is the first important constructor what we have under the delegate the thread class now and for the thread class what you are passing the delegate as a parameter. What is the parameter? What is the delegate? Thread start delegate. And remember this thread start delegate does not take any parameter. It is not taking any parameter right now we have noticed it the thread start delegate yes. So, it is called as metadata you right click on anything and you can say go to definition right click on thread and say go to definition. It will show the metadata of the thread class thread is a sealed class you cannot inherit from this class present under system dot threading namespace and there you can watch out all the four constructors of the thread class. The first one the thread start delegate parameterize thread start delegate yeah right now our method does not have any parameter then we are using thread start delegate. But tomorrow if at all our method is going to have any parameters in that scenario we cannot use the thread start delegate. What I should use is parameterized thread start have a look right click go to definition. It is also non value writing but takes a parameter what is the parameter object as a parameter you can pass object as a parameter for this and execute the things. So, that is what happens to in the thread parameterized thread start ok let us have a look. I am going to writing write one more method here a similar method test int max overloaded. So, right now if you just notice set max what is this max right now this is printing from 1 to 100 no no I do not want it to be printing from 1 to 100 I want it to be printing from 1 to the max limit what I am giving. So, without 100 let me use max here for the time being I am commenting the first method let me comment it I am just commenting the first method and right now you notice here you are getting an error. Why are you getting an error? The reason for getting an error in this location is watch watch this what is it this test method takes an int parameter now and this is not matching with the delegate now what is the delegate thread start is the delegate and this does not match with this delegate. So, what to do? This is a place where you are required to go for using parameterized thread start delegate not a thread start ok. Put this in a comment what should I do now is parameterized thread start obj 
is equals to new parameterized thread start. Watch. What is it taking? Void is a written type and takes a parameter of which type? Object. Right now, can I pass my test method here? Let us try. Test. Test is what I am passing, but still I am getting an error. The reason why I am getting an error at this place is the test method, what is it taking? Int. But the delegate is not taking int as a parameter, the delegate is taking object as a parameter. So, what you can pass is object type only can be passed here. You can only pass the object type. So, what to do? Go back to the method and write it as object max okay? and afterwards come inside and internally make a conversion. What is it? Int number is equals to convert dot 2 into 32 of max. When you say convert dot 2 into 32 of max, this is converted into integer and simply pass num here. So, right now what are you taking? Object and this object I am implicitly converting into an integer and passing it as a parameter now. So, now there is no error, it was taking now. And now the question that arises is how to pass the value? How to pass the value for this max now? You should pass the value to the max for the start method. Start is a overloaded method. See there, the first one does not take any parameter and the second one takes a parameter. What is it? Object parameter. And right now I am passing 50. The value 50 now reaches the method and executes. See now, it prints from 1 to 50. 1 to 50. I can just go for specifying a different value 75 and now it prints from 1 to 75. So, this is what if you want to pass any parameters to your method, we can pass it, but of type object only. But unfortunately, what is the problem is because you are passing the value of type object, they are not type safe. What not type safe tomorrow? If I am going to pass hello here, then also it will try to execute. Because it is of type object, it will not give me any compile time error when I am just trying to call the method, run it and now it is not going to perform you the execution. Why is it not performing? Because the method, what did you pass here? String. So, the method takes the string as a parameter and goes into the method, yeah, getting an error. What is the error? Format exception. Why? String cannot be converted into integer. You cannot convert the string C. Max contains hello and how this hello can be converted to number. So, compile time error will not come for us. Why? Because object takes anything. So, that is why we said it is not type safe. We will learn how to make it type safe in the latter videos, but remember be careful when you are passing, you should pass only integer value. If you pass non integer value, you will never get a compile time error, what you get is a runtime error and getting runtime errors is not right. Okay? So, you should be a bit careful when you are passing the value. Right now, it is not type safe. Thank you for watching the video. For more videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Naresh IT.